in this video we'll be looking into the important topics and uh, questions uh, which have appeared in the sample paper internals from second module of software engineering and project management subject so starting with the first chapter that is understanding requirements we have the first topic that is requirement engineering so this is a short short question um, it could be asked for 8 marks or 10 marks so understanding the definition first it is requirement engineering is a broad spectrum of tasks and techniques that that lead to understanding of requirements so uh, like where do we get the requirements we get requirements in the communication uh, activity right so it is a major uh, software engineering action that begins during communication activity and continues uh, into modeling activity so it builds a bridge between uh, design and construction so only if we understand the requirements only if we gather the requirements we can be able to generate the model from model for the design then construction then deployment so those are the five uh, activities right for any software process uh, to happen so it provides understanding of what customer needs are analyzing uh, their needs feasibility like whatever they are asking is it feasible uh, like is it logically possible and then negotiating a reasonable solution okay uh, negotiation also plays an important role while uh, understanding the requirements we'll discuss this further okay then specifying the solution validating and managing the requirements so in this requirement engineering there are seven distinct tasks so starting from the first task first task is inception so it is uh, the, like the first stage of software uh, project like uh, here we identify the opportunities define the project scope engage the stakeholders into initial discussions to ensure alignment with the business goals so in in uh, inception we make sure that uh, identification is done we we um, go through the preliminary analysis part okay after inception is done like initial uh, gathering of information and talking to the stakeholders then we come to elicitation that is from this vague understanding we then derive something meaningful okay that is we gather requirements overcoming challenges how do we gather requirements by interviews surveys and after gather, gathering the requirements we prioritize them so depending on the requirement depending on what the stakeholder is told we'll prioritize it okay first uh, let me do this function then this is important then this is important okay prioritization of the requirements is done here so the problem is unclear system boundaries stakeholder vague understanding of needs conflict conflicting requirements changes uh, need over changing needs over time so uh, after gathering the requirements i start working on the model process but then sometimes um, whatever the stakeholder is telling may not be like clear enough that is vague understanding of needs by the stakeholder or conflicting requirements the requirements are not uh, aligning with whatever the company has to offer or like today he told something tomorrow again he's changing it then day after tomorrow again he's changing it so changing needs over time are potential problems which could arise in elicitation of requirements then we have elaboration by definition only we, by the name only we can understand elaboration is to uh, whatever requirements we have gathered here we will elaborate in, it into detailed models okay how will we elaborate it using user scenarios and diagrams to validate it and Uh, perform uh, communication uh, requirement for design and development so initially we took uh, we we had a discussion with the stakeholders here we gathered the information with stakeholders uh, through interviews and surveys and here whatever the information we obtained we developed detailed models using uh, user scenarios and diagrams here so these scenarios help in identifying the attributes services and their relationship and collaborations map so in order to depict in order to uh, elaborate it we make use of class diagrams sequence diagrams so elaboration is a solid foundation for design and development once it is clearly elaborated we understand each and every point then we can start working on the coding part and then designing also first designing then coding then uh, elaboration enhances communication with clear visual documentation because we are making use of class diagrams sequence diagrams and uh, user scenarios it will be easy to understand right uh, from a stakeholder perspective or from a developer perspective a team member in the developing team perspective it will be easy if you are making use of visual documentation okay so this was about elaboration next we have negotiation so whatever customer had to say whatever the requirements he had to tell he told now uh, it's up to us we have to negotiate when customer demands more than what we can uh, what is feasibly achieved with limited resources 
so feasibly achieved with limited resources there are limited resources and the, and the customer is asking too much at so negotiation how to do negotiation we have a structured negotiation uh, like framework okay steps to to be followed through which negotiation could be employed so uh, firstly stakeholder rank requirements firstly we rank the requirements and discuss the conflicts based on the priority then we evaluate their cost and risk implications and then we also address the internal conflicts so by ranking the requirements and then prioritizing it and then we also evaluate the cost and uh, the rank uh, the risk implications so depending on those uh, like suppose if uh, we have come up with suppose if customer has told 10 requirements 10 requirements is ready to pay 10 rupees which is not feasible so in this condition what we'll do is we'll negotiate so in 10 rupees we can perform only five uh, requirements so this position the customer has or the stakeholder has to prioritize those five um, requirements so he'll rank the requirements prioritize it and then along with this we'll also he'll also look into the cost and risk implications uh, and addressing the internal conflicts so it involves eliminating combining modifying requirements to ensure that each party attains satisfactory outcome while aligning with the project con constraints and the objectives of the uh, of the team okay of the software developing team so this example which i told may not be uh, correct but then uh, in order to understand uh, negotiation how it happens um, you can you can consider this then we have the specification so once negotiation is done now properly requirements are obtained in proper rank and then priority we have got it in specification we are specifying it in written document we are articulating the requirements why are we writing the requirements constraints and functionalities so that in future we can uh, while we have to update this particular software or project we can refer them so we the specification is also done through graphical models uh, which includes the architecture data flow and ui of the particular program which we are working on so we can also make use of mathematical models requirement representations and formal models also next we have uh, after this we have is validation so uh, whatever the work product uh, are thoroughly assessed for quality so our goal is to ensure specification is clear consistent and complete and it also obeys the standard for process project and product so validation involves examining the specification to identify and rectify any inconsistencies or errors if it occurs so in order to do this we perform technical review technical review with the customers users engineers in technical review we discuss about what are the loopholes and uh, how do we overcome that how do we rectify them this was about validation the last task we have is requirement management so once all the requirements are obtained and everything is proper now uh, we, sh we should manage them that is set of activities that help project team identify control track requirement and change the requirement at any time uh, as the project proceeds is called requirement management so we make use of a project life cycle here adaptability and change control are the features of requirement management so this question requirement engineering is pretty important seven tasks make sure that you uh, study them properly then we have uh, establishing the groundwork so in order to establish the groundwork we should follow uh, like there are six steps five steps here four steps here so the first step is to identify the stakeholders who are the stakeholders the one who benefit directly or indirectly from the system which we are developing are called as stakeholders so stakeholders can comprise of uh, business operation managers it could be product managers marketing people end users consultants product engineers support end users uh, support maintenance engineers and others so identifying the stakeholders is pretty important because uh, depending on the stakeholders the requirements vary which we'll be discussing further so identifying stakeholders promotes collaboration and ensures that all relevant relevant viewpoints are accounted for the development process next we have is recognizing multiple viewpoints multiple viewpoints arise from multiple stakeholders who are the stakeholders we have discussed above so recognizing multiple viewpoints is crucial because stakeholders vary and uh, as the stakeholders vary they have distinct interests and outlooks to a particular uh, project which we are dealing upon for example the marketing people look into the marketing appeal for the business people look into the business constraints the profit loss and the end user what matters to end user is the software is uh, user friendly or not the features available in the software should be user friendly 
So this was about recognizing the multiple viewpoints. So categorizing the stakeholders input help identify the consistent requirements, facilitating decision making and ensuring alignment with the project goals. So this was about require uh, recognizing multiple viewpoints. Once multiple viewpoints are recognized, we should further uh, deal with working towards collaboration. That is, we should make sure that the stakeholders, the software engineers, uh, the business people, the consultants, product engineers, marketing people, all of them work together. So working together is essential because it leads to identification of common ground areas of conflict by requirement engineer. So by fostering uh, uh, an, an environment for collaboration and cooperation, the requirement engineer uh, engineering helps ensure the project stays on track. So after this, we have asking the first questions. So these first questions should be context free. That is, it should focus on understanding, uh, having a broader understanding of the context of the of the project which we are working on. So we should understand the goals and stakeholders involved rather than de uh, uh, like dealing into or getting into the specific technical details like which program do you want? What do you want? Uh, what are the functionalities? No. Before going to all that, we should deal into these uh, three things, these four things. That is, who will be the end user of the solution? Who initiated the request for this project? That is, uh, is it really, really feasible to develop this project? Even if I develop this project in market, will it have any value or not? That is the second uh, question. Then what are the potential economic gains for successful implementation? That's what I told. Then we have, are the existing solutions available that could meet the uh, needs instead of custom development? So once we ask these four questions, the first questions, we generate answers depending on them, we should move further. So these are the four steps which we, which are pretty essential for establishing the groundwork. Uh, we'll move further. Next, we have elicitation of requirements. So elicitation of requirements means gathering of requirements. So it combines of elements, uh, elicitation of requirements combines elements of problem solving, elaboration, negotiation and specification. We'll look into... Uh, the sub parts that is collaborative requirement gathering. So in collaborative requirement gathering, many different approaches are used to gather the requirements. Here we'll uh, speak of uh, like meetings. Okay. In particular, we'll speak of meetings. So meetings are conducted and attended by the software engineers, stakeholders. Okay. Rules for preparation and participation of the meetings are made. So firstly, the rules are made and who will participate, who will not participate, all that is decided. Secondly, what is the time and venue is decided. After deciding the time and venue, the agenda is suggested for the uh, meeting. What will be the agenda for the meeting? Then we have facilitator control. Who will control the meeting? There has to be someone who will uh, uh, like lead the meeting, right? Some leader, okay, informal leader. So who will take care of uh, who will speak, how the meeting should go and uh, all the other requirements. Then we have the defined mechanism used, definition mechanism used. So along with uh, like uh, like definition mechanism here could be a worksheets, flip uh, like a flip charts or wall stickers or bulletin boards, chart room, uh, visual forum. All these could be used to uh, make sure that the uh, the meeting, uh, the the aim for developing meeting or conducting meeting is met. That is, uh, we conducted meetings so that we could gather the requirements from different people right that is software engineers and stakeholders our goal is to identify the problem uh, propose elements of solution negotiate negotiate uh, different uh, approaches and specify a preliminary set of uh, solution requirements if we look at an example here the scenario is campus event management application so for developing campus event management application we should firstly identify the stakeholders who are the stakeholders students College authority, developers are the initial stakeholders, then comes the event organizers. Then we'll conduct the meeting obeying all the above conditions and then we'll make use of user collaborative techniques. That is, that is we'll have surveys, uh, Q&As, workshops, brainstorming, user stories to, uh, to gather the information. Once the information is gathered, we'll document it and validate the requirements. Once it is, once it is properly documented and validated, then we create, come up with the creating of prototype. So once prototype is created, then we iterate and improve it further. Next, we have uh, something called as quality function deployment. This was again asked in the sample paper. Uh, this could be asked for six marks because there are uh, three requirements which, which need to be written. Each requirement of two marks, uh, it, it could work. So quality function deployment is a powerful quality management technique. Quality management technique used to ensure that customer needs are translated 
effectively into technical requirements for software development whatever the customer has told it should be um, translated into technical requirements in order to do that uh, quality function uh, function deployment is used so the objective is to maximize customer satisfaction throughout the software engineering process by understanding and deploying customer values efficient eff uh, effectively so uh, quality function deployment uh, categorizes the requirements into three types normal expected and exciting by the words only we can understand the definition also but then uh, in exam we need to elaborate it and write it properly with an example also so firstly we have the normal requirements normal requirements are the requirements which are told by the stakeholder like i want um, five features in my website five features in my uh, product is what normal requirements are that is explicit goals objectives told by the customer during meetings so meeting uh, these would result in customer satisfaction so customer knew that uh, these uh, normal requirements would be met so when these normal requirements are, are met customer would be happy that is pretty simple so example is specific system functions uh, types of graphical uh, displays defined performance levels then we have the expected requirements so these are the uh, fundamentals to product or system and customer may not explicitly speak of them because they are basic expectation basic expectation in the sense uh, whatever the product which we are developing should be real time should be real time responsive and uh, it should have a proper networking and then uh, like even the load uh, load on the website should also be proper like if one person is accessing or 10000 people are accessing it should properly distribute the load and all of that those are uh, unsaid rules unsaid expectations from the uh, from the user okay from the stakeholder so not meeting them would lead to significant dissatisfaction are these were the uh, minimum things expected from the company or adhe meet agilla andre the stakeholder would be utterly disappointed okay it uh, for example overall operation correctiveness so if i click login uh, the login button is not working properly this is this is a minimum thing no lo if login button is pressed it should work but then if it is not working customer would be dissatisfied so then reliability issues ease of software installation and all of that come under expected requirements then we have exciting requirements so these are the requirements that surpass customer requirements and provide ultimate level of satisfaction and unexpected delights so something which the customer had was not expecting but then it is like a add on feature which you have given as a gift to the customer okay so that that is what exciting requirements speaks of then uh, we we'll look into elicitation of work products so work products uh, the work products produced uh, as a consequence of requirement elicitation will vary depending on the size of system or the product to be built so most system for the most systems work products include a statement of need and feasibility it will have a bounded scope of system and product uh, the list of customers or the technical members or the stakeholders who are participated in the requirement elicitation along with a description of systems technical environment and then list of requirements and domain constraints that apply to each a set of uh, usage scenarios that provide insight into use of system or uh, product under different operating conditions any prototypes developed for better understanding so work products is like um, it will give a complete overview of the requirements which are uh, conveyed to the developers so it will come it will uh, consist of the statement who what is the need uh, what is the scope who are the people participated what are the technical requirements uh, what are the features what are the usage scenarios if any prototype is there that prototype also included all that come under work products so we have looked into work products next we have developing the use cases so use cases are defined from an actor's point of view so use cases are uh, like uh, use cases are defined from a actor's point of view uh, who are who is a actor actor could be people user or drive uh, devices as they interact with the software so uh, anything that interacts with the software is termed as uh, the use uh, is termed as actor okay so here uh, we'll look into the safety uh, safe home system example so it involves four actors so house owner is the first actor the setup manager is the second actor sensors so sensors react with the software right so depending on uh, whether the password is correct or incorrect sensors perform action accordingly and then we have monitoring and responsive system that is the alarm alarm also is a uh, actor here so the house owner can perform various actions here 
So either you can enter a password to enable interactions, check the status of security zones or sensors. Uh, he can press the panic button in case of emergencies and then activating or deactivating of security system. Here we have the UML uh, use case diagram for the safe home system. So here we have the homeowner who can arm or disarm that is activate or deactivate the system access the system via internet access the camera surveillance via internet respond to uh, any alarms any alarm event if occurs you can respond to that and uh, uh, yeah and encounter error condition also uh, it is uh, how uh, like homeowner can access these things whereas when it comes to system administrator he can reconfigure the sensors and related system features which cannot be done by the homeowner okay so this was the uml use case diagram Next, we have a basic use case for system activation using control panel. So uh, these steps are pretty important. We should write it. Uh, if asked developing use cases, we should write these also. So the house owner checks the control panel to see if the system is ready or not. If the system is not ready, uh, then the address open sensor indicated to not ready message. So now assuming that the system is ready, we'll move next. So the house owner enters four digit password using the keypad. Keypad would be uh, provided. So using that keypad, uh, we'll enter the four digit password. So if I have to draw the safe home management, uh, safe home system. So it could be like here keys are there, here whatever the message uh, is there and here the cameras could be there. Okay, so this is just a vague understanding um, in question. They won't ask how and uh, what the safe home system is and all. Okay. So yeah, keypad with the keypad, we enter the four digit. Uh, if it is correct, we go to the next step, else error message is displayed. So initially we checked if the system is ready or not. If the system is ready, we entered the four digit password. Um, then if it is correct, we move further. That is a uh, house owner selects two modes, one stay or away mode to activate the system. Each mode determining which sensors are enabled. So after selecting the mode, once activation is done, red alarm light system is a red alarm light glows by uh, when the light glows we can understand that the system is activated so these are the four steps we need to be followed uh, for activating the control panel okay so the this high level scenario provides a concise overview of the interaction between system and actor so each step we have specified what to do if else both the conditions have been declared here right so this detailed use case outlines the open issues related with setting the system to monitor sensors. Re reviewing each use case is important to refine the use cases and ensure that all key aspects of interaction are properly met. So this was about the use case, uh, use case UML diagram. Next we have the UML activity diagram for elicitating the requirements. So firstly, um, in order to perform elicitation of requirements, uh, like we start with elicitation of requirements. Uh, in which meetings are conducted we make list of functions or classes here functions or classes refer to the uh, requirements like uh, previously we had discussed you no know, different uh, stakeholders have different perspectives so those different perspectives could be further uh, broken down into different classes along with that even the functionality specified by the user can also be um, made a list of functions okay then we make a list of constraints what are the constraints to the, these functions or the requirements so then we perform the formal prioritization. If they are satisfied, we look into the quality function or deployment. We look into the quality function deployment QFD to prioritize the requirements. So here again, normal requirement expected and exciting requirements come here. If not, we informally prioritize the requirements. So we only like um, the user, like when you are validating the requirements only, we have meetings no, where um, the stakeholder and the user sit and informally prioritize the requirement. Once this is done, uh, we then come up with the use cases, use cases, different scenarios which could come up uh, from the actor's perspective. Okay. Once use cases are generated here, we draw the use case diagram. But before that, we define the actors, write the scenarios and then complete the template. That is what we have done. We have seen previously, right? So we define the actors for uh, safe home system and then we uh, wrote the different scenarios which could happen, various actions which could take place. And uh, we also deduce the template for uh, activation of the user, the control panel. What, what are the steps to be followed? Okay. Then we draw the use case diagram here. So this is 
like UML activity diagram for elicitating of the requirements like from the starting to the ending all the steps have been uh, displayed here properly so the requirement model for the system is constructed using scenario based approach focusing on describing the system from users perspective so the diagrams outline primary interaction with the system so these base cases use these base uh, basic use cases serve as foundation for other modeling elements so scenario based elements uh, are the use cases so here they are generated first in the requirement model so they provide input for creating other modeling elements they depict the elicitation and uh, re representation of requirements through use cases so they depict system interactions by three levels of elaboration so we made use of three levels of elaboration here right next we have the class based elements so scenario based elements we understood uh, depending on the scenarios the elements are classified in class based elements they are derived from the use usage scenarios implying set of objects manipulated as actors interact with the system so these objects are categorized into classes depicting groups of entities with same attributes and behaviors so whichever um, uh, activities have same uh, behavior and attribute they are clubbed as uh, classes okay so in uml class diagram sensor class depicts the operations or activities so uh, there, there are various operations which are happening on sensors right so those all those things can come under sensor class okay then we have behavioral class uh, behavior uh, based elements so they are important for capturing systems dynamic aspects so that is impacting the dis, uh, uh, design decisions implementation approaches so requirement model includes modeling elements that depict systems behavior so if it is positive if it is yes it goes on this side if it is no it goes on this side that is we have seen the uh, uh, like uh, conditioning right so that is what behavioral uh, based element speaks of okay so these elements help define how system functions and interacts with the users and other components guiding the design and development process so next we'll move on to negotiate uh, negotiating the requirements so uh, as we have discussed previously negotiating the requirements is pretty important so that we achieve the win-win condition uh, between the stakeholders and the software team for stakeholders what is important the product should be satisfying all the needs but for the software team what is important the whatever the requirements they have told it should come under the realistic budget and it should meet the deadlines also so bohem speaks of series of negoci negotiation activities at outline uh, at outset of each software process iteration to have win-win condition so firstly identification of key stakeholder involved in the system or subsystem uh, once the key stakeholder is identified uh, determination uh, determining the stakeholders win condition or outcomes they seek for and then we ask for then we ask the stakeholder what do you want in wake up on india all that okay and then after the stakeholder uh, stakeholder tells what he wants we perform negotiation of these win conditions to reincoil them into a set of mutually beneficial conditions for all parties involved including the software team now here comes the negotiation part after uh, the user has told whatever he wants now we'll sit and discuss okay you want these things i have these constraints so let's come to a win win condition let's come to an agreement and proceed such that um, you are also benefited i am also benefited and uh, our ultimate goal is to develop the project right so we meet the win win condition so that is what negotiation of uh, requirements is uh, speaks of then we have validating the requirements so it is pretty important to validate the requirements so it is validating requirements is a process of creating requirement model that involves thorough examination and review to ensure uh, the requirements quality and alignment with the project uh, objectives so whatever the requirements user has told and the project objectives both should align so we should check if both are aligning or not so uh, in order to develop a uh, youtube application user tells that uh, add video calling feature there video calling feature is not necessary right so while if video calling feature is mentioned in the requirements we can directly neglect it or cancel it so during the review of uh, requirements mod so stakeholders prioritize requirements and organize them into packages for implementation as software increments so packages requirements are organized into packages now we'll look into the like uh, like questions which need to be addressed like uh, during the uh, review of requirement model no we should uh, look into these topics first one is consistency like are all the requirements uh, which are told by the stakeholder consistent like with overall objective of the system or product uh, are they proper enough that is the first 
uh, question which we need to look upon. Then we have abstraction. Like uh, whatever the, uh, the user has told, uh, we look into the abstraction level. Like, uh, uh, like are there any unnecessary technical details at this particular stage? We will look into that. If not, um, if there are any unnecessary details, we'll delete it off. Then we'll look into necessity. So whatever the final objective is there and whatever the necessities, uh, whatever the requirements user has told, uh, is it really needed? Is video calling option really needed in YouTube application? No. So we can discard it. Then we have clarity. So uh, clarity here speaks of uh, like the requirement should be defined properly. It should be unambiguous. There should not be any confusion or misinterpret. Uh, one should not misinterpret the requirements. Okay. Then we have the attribution. Attribution and uh, it could be like uh, whatever the requirements you are told. Are they like, like are they proper? Are they uh, like accountable, traceable? We should check. So if requirements, whatever user has told, if they are not accountable, if they are not traceable, if they don't have any business aspect, it is of no use adding them to our uh, project rate. Right? So that is uh, attribution. Then we have conflict resolution. Conflict resolution is when two or more requirements conflict with each other. How do we resolve it? Then we have feasibility. So whatever uh, the requirements are told by the stakeholder, are they really feasible enough? Can I, can the, can the team really design it? Uh, it could be the technical requirements, technical aspect or uh, the uh, expectations from the stakeholders. Then we have the testability. So uh, the requirements uh, like um, like requirements once tested or implemented it should it should lead to validation and verification of system functionality. It should not be like uh, invalid cases. Then we have the representation. So a representation is the rep, uh, like how you display the requirements, how they are accepted and uh, they are understood by the teammates in the uh, like in the development team. So looking at all these questions, if the requirements satisfy all these questions or they have a proper valid answer for all these questions, that requirement is said to be uh, a valid requirement and we can move on to further steps. So this was about first chapter. Let's look into second chapter now. In second chapter, we have a requirement analysis. We we'll look into the first topic that is requirement analysis. So in requirement analysis, uh, once we get the requirements from the user, we need to analyze it. What, what do we do in analyzing it? So here we'll, uh, we'll discuss it. So to specify the software's operational characteristics, we specify the operational characteristics, interfaces and constraints here. So, so we elaborate the requirements obtained in the requirement engineering. So requirement analysis results in requirement models. So there are different requirement models we have. So the first one is scenario based model. Scenario based model means uh, from different uh, actors perspective, like we have discussed the homeowner or the technical person, depending on their uh, perspectives, the requirements may vary, right? So that comes under scenario based uh, model. Then we have the data based model uh, that is data models. So it depicts the problems uh, like information domain, whatever the information they have given that comes under data model. Then we have class oriented model. So in class oriented model, we make use of object oriented class. Uh, the attributes, operations, functions, collaborations, all that are involved here. Then in flow oriented model, model we look into the, um, the flow, the flow of functional elements and the data transformations from one step to another step to another step. How it happens that comes under flow oriented model. Then we have behavioral oriented model. That is how the software will uh, uh, response. What is the behavior of software? Okay. To different external events. So that comes under behavioral model. So uh, depicting it in a diagram software requirements. Generally, these four are the important ones. Scenario based, class based, behavioral based and flow oriented based. So this is the diagram for that. Next, further moving from these models, we can assess software's quality. Post development, uh, we can guide the designer in creating interfaces, component level designs and so on. So here requirement model has three objectives. First one is to describe what the customer needs firstly, and then provide basis for design creation. Once uh, like elicitation was the first step. After elicitation, we analyze the requirements, right? During the process of analyzing, we form this requirement model. Let us describe what the customer needs initially and then we create a basic design. Okay, uh, we, we provide information for creating a basic design. So and along with that, we also define set of requirements that can be validated once the software is built. So this was about the objectives. 
speaking of uh, analysis model bridges the gap between system level description and software design so system level description was given by the user at the first state and the software design at the third state third uh, activity so bridging the gap between these two is done by the analysis model so uh, this was a system description here we have the design model and here we have the analysis model which is uh, like inter intersection of these two okay next we have the an analysis uh, rules of thumb so to create effective analysis model these are the thumb rules which need to be obeyed or uh, followed so this rule was given by uh, arlo was given by arlo new stat okay so this person these this person these two people offered uh, a standard set of rules okay so first one is focus on visible uh, requirements so we should keep a high level of abstraction and avoid getting into detail uh, explanations and all we should see what is uh, visible what are the prime requirements and then focus on them then add to understanding so uh, each element uh, we should make sure that each element uh, enhances the uh, so understanding of software requirements and it provides uh, information about what uh, the functions are what uh, the behavior is how will it happen what is the domain and all of that then we uh, the delay non functional consideration so whichever is non functional uh, uh, considerations like uh, databases we can delay it okay Unt uh, like until after the problem domain analysis happens then we have minimize coupling so minimize coupling means uh, uh, here we represent relationship between class and function but uh, we 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 um, aim to attain that all classes are uh, like all the classes are mapped properly classes and functions are mapped properly we should avoid this because at the initial stage only why do we have to take uh, so much um, complex uh, um, coupling and all it is not needed so minimize it then provide stakeholder value that is uh, we should ensure that the model is useful to all the stakeholders for their purposes that is uh, like validating the requirements uh, we should uh, discuss what could be the, could be the test cases uh, which could be um, enabled after the software is built we have discussed previously in requirement model right yeah and then keep it simple we should make sure that um, um, it is not complex enough that is in the first step only we discussed it should not be complex enough so uh, these uh, six or seven thumb rules are uh, pretty important uh, they could be asked for three or four marks then we have domain analysis domain analysis involves identifying analyzing specifying common requirements and reusable capacities with a specific application domain like banking video games and so on so common set of uh, operations or requirements for suppose if we speak of banking uh, uh, application here uh, safety is the first requirement second requirement is user will log in and then uh, he can look into the uh, uh, balance account balance and all the other things and so all those are uh, common uh, all those are common requirements right so we can club all those and form a specific application domain so that is uh, once that domain is formed we will analyze that domain that is we will identify analyze and specify those domains that that comes under domain analysis so this activity aims to find or create analysis classes and patterns that are broadly applicable for reuse so domain analysis is an ongoing software engineering activity that supports multiple projects so we have the source of domain knowledge uh, that is technical literature existing applications customer surveys expert advice and all of that we uh, we make sure that it undergoes domain analysis such that uh, when the output comes it should give domain analysis model it should generate a model from the source knowledge okay so this model uh, could be generated from the functional models domain language class taxonomies and other things looking into the requirement modeling it is further classified into two types one is structural analysis and we have object oriented analysis in structural analysis we separate the data and processes so data objects are defined by attributes and relation this is object oriented modeling uh, like that only okay coming to uh, yeah sorry this is uh, like we have attributes and relationships but then coming to here it is specifically object oriented that is we focus on defining the classes and their collaborations to meet the customer requirements okay so requirement model comprises of various models that is scenario based model class based model behavioral based model flow oriented model so we'll look into each of this further the scenario based model could uh, show us the user interactions with the system and uh, the what are the activity uh, happening during 
uh, when the system is running okay when the system is in use what are the activities happening that comes under system based elements then we have the class based uh, elements in class based elements uh, the model systems uh, are broken into objects operations and then we have hierarchical relationships classes and all of that coming to behavioral so behavioral is on external events how will the software behave okay then is flow oriented flow oriented is um, from one step to another step to another step how the flow goes how the uh, execution of the software happens is what flow oriented element speaks of so this is the diagram for that okay moving next we have scenario based modeling so in scenario based modeling uh, we capture the functional requirements from the user perspective by using the use cases so we make use of use cases and ensure that the software um, meets whatever the user requirements are provided so to develop use cases we follow three steps first one is create preliminary use case preliminary use case means we identify the function like uh, we, we make a list of primary functions uh, what could be performed by the user then we define the actor who are uh, interacting with the system we note down then we outline the scenarios what are the different scenarios which could happen uh, we have seen all this in the previous example right safe uh, home system we have seen this first step second step is we refine the preliminary use case how will we refine the preliminary use case uh, here we uh, detailing scenarios again we make we saw how to activate the control system that is that comes under refining only we identify what are the exceptions if else conditions we wrote no that comes under exceptions only then validate with stakeholder once we write all this to we make sure that the stakeholders review this because uh, they should be satisfied with it no then we write the formal use case so deriving the formal use case comprises of user use case name primary actor goal what is the, what are the preconditions what would be the trigger what is the main success scenario what are the extensions priority what is the frequency of use and what are the open issues which we, which, which we can encounter while uh, using the software uh, let's understand this with the example that is safe home system so first step to create preliminary use case so uh, here we have the uh, homeowner so homeowner will select camera to view after that he'll request thumbnails from all cameras and then uh, display camera views in pc window so first camera view select and then after that thumbnail is selected and then it is depicted in the pc that is window and then we selectively record camera operation output and then further access it through the internet so this is a proper uh, use case sequence of, uh, which we have depicted here the proper scenario which is happening here so here who are the actors actor is homeowner the view camera and request thumbnails are the homeowners what are the scenarios scenarios are here we have told coming to the second stage that is we refine we refine the preliminary use case here use case is uh, access the camera via internet so homeowner logs into the safe home website and then he enters a password and id select surveillance picks a particular camera and then system shows the camera views so here we are uh, like we are looking into the detailed scenario one particular scenario identifying what could be the exception 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 could be by logging in if i give the incorrect id or password and or it could be system is not configured at all reconfigured at all and then that could it could lead to the exceptions after writing this we should check with the stakeholder we should show this to stakeholder and say are you satisfied is saka anta kelbek stakeholder ge then comes the next stage that is to write the formal use case to write the formal use case primary actor who is the primary actor house owner what is the goal goal is to view camera feed uh, through internet okay what is the precondition precondition is system should be configured properly and the user should be authenticated that is uh, he should log in properly with a valid id and password and other uh, details you can mention trigger what is the trigger house owner decides uh, decides to select a camera that is a trigger condition what is the main scenario main scenario is to make sure that uh, uh, the user can see what are the extensions extensions here are the hardware uh, components you are connecting the software to the camera right that is extension what is the priority priority is uh, it could be moderate because uh, yeah priority could be moderate high or anything it could be frequency of you of use how often will you use it um, that again specify here what are the open issues open issues again as we have discussed uh, if the uh, if, if the incorrect user name password or if any system fails i will discuss it here okay the activity diagram so here we have the uml diagram so here is the house owner he can access the camera surveillance via internet he can configure the safe home system parameters he can set an alarm so uh, in order to access the camera it should be linked with the camera okay 
Then we have the UML models that support the use case. That is the activity diagram. If activity diagram is asked in exam, we should draw this. So it depicts what are the steps we are doing here, the scenario based, what are the scenarios which we considered here. So the first scenario is to enter password and ID. Once password and ID is entered, there are two options now. If it is a valid password, we come to this side. Invalid password, we come to this side. Invalid password, bandre, prompt for re-entry. That is invalid password, enter again. We direct back to enter password, place. Uh, if not, if the password is valid, we select a major function that is to select surveillance. The major function here is to select the surveillance cameras. Now in surveillance cameras, we have two options uh, if, uh, to select the thumbnail uh, views or we could go according to specific camera. If we go according to thumbnail views, we know which thumbnail we want, right? Then we can select specific, thumb, uh, specific camera thumbnails and then we can view the camera output in labeled window. And if we view, if we select any specific camera also, we can select the camera icon and then view it in the labeled window. After viewing it in the labeled window, we prompt for another view. And then uh, either we exit from uh, this particular loop or we select for another camera. That is, we come here to select the specific camera. Okay. So this is the activity diagram for UML uh, model that supports the use case. Uh, next, we have the data-based uh, modeling, sorry, the data modeling. So in data modeling, we have um, certain topics to understand, certain points to understand. It is pretty simple. In uh, textbook, if you look, no, database modeling, it is, they have made use of different diagrams and all of that. But then understanding these three things and drawing uh, boxes is pretty sufficient enough. I hope you know what is a relation, what are the attributes, what are the records and all of that. How to describe uh, an attribute, uh, what are... Uh, and uh, what are the naming attributes, what are the instances and all of that. So firstly, we have the data objects. Data objects represent uh, the composite info processed within the system. So they have entities like roles, places, structures and all of that. So each object has a set of attributes defining its properties, encapsulating only data without referencing op operations. So here only the data is specified, not the operations. Then we have the data attributes here. What are the data attributes? So they define the properties of data objects, which could be the name, description, reference instances, and so on. Then you have the relationships. Relationship is to establish connection between different objects. So uh, in order to establish connection between different tables, uh, we, like different entities, we make use of relationships. So this is pretty much about uh, database modeling. Coming to class-based modeling, uh, here uh, we make use Class-based modeling is used to design systems using object-oriented principles. Object-oriented principles. In this, firstly, we identify the analysis classes. That is, these classes are abstractions of real-world entities. They are taken from real-world entity within the problem domain. So these classes encapsulate data and behavior. So these classes, identifying the analysis classes means you are selecting uh, what are the uh, like what are the different um, classes on which. Uh, the program could execute okay now so here example they have told smart devices it comprises of lights and security cameras and the user here is individual in the smart home system then we specify the attributes how will we specify the attributes by providing details of classes that is light light could be on off we are providing details security camera it, uh, it could rotate right left or 360 degrees or it could be on or off so those are specifying details. Then we define the operations. Define operations here could also be called as methods or functions. So they are behaviors associated with a class. So these operations encapsulate behavior of class and define how instances react. So if the camera is on, what should happen is defined here. Then we have what is called as CRC modeling. CRC modeling is uh, class responsibility collaborator modeling. So it is a technique to brainstorm and organize classes uh, responsibilities and collaborations within a system. So here we make use of the CRC cards. So CRC cards represent a class and it includes its responsibilities and collaborations. So assuming this as a CRC card. So initially there will be the name of the CRC card. Here would be the class and along with that we will have the uh, here we have the responsibilities and collaborations of each CRC card. This is a CRC card. Okay. So um yeah this is the crc card so each of these are crc cards which are further um like linked into each other okay so uh, th uh, this techniques aid in visualizing structure and interactions of class system so when the data is depicted this way it will be easy for us to understand right 
so that is what uh, this uh, line speaks of so along with this we have access for uh, association and dependencies so uh, there could be conditions where floor plan cannot be accessed by the camera but then camera could be accessed by the floor plan that is we are uh, allowing the dependencies right in but uh, or it could be for floor plan for a for a person for a person to access the floor plan he should have he should any he should uh, enter the proper password that is in order to perform in order to let the association happen we should enter proper dependencies here and along with that when the dependencies are entered we should perform analysis so that is um, from this path like does this connection or um, does this modeling actually have any uh, significance does it make any sense is what will derive okay so this was about crc modeling so here we come up uh, here we come to conclusion for uh, the second module i hope you have understood all the topics i'll be uploading these notes in uh, the drive if you have any doubts do let me know in comments and uh, if you have not watched the important uh, important questions video just go through it i have specified all the important questions from this module and all of the questions have been covered in this video and uh, stay tuned for third module fourth module and fifth module i'll be uploading it soon and uh, yeah thank you